Hello everyone. In the last video, we have understood the importance of sexual reproduction. So let's move on and talk about the process of sexual reproduction in different organisms. First of all, we are going to see the process of sexual reproduction in different flowering plants. Now we all have seen different fruits like apples, mangoes and many more which contain seeds and when these seeds are sown in soil, they grow into a new plant. So the important part here is seed. They are the ones which are responsible for producing a new plant. Now the process of reproduction in plants is the process of formation of seeds. Formation of new plant from seeds is not a reproduction process but it is altogether a different process called as germination. So you should not confuse reproduction in plants as a new plant arising from seeds but it is formation of seeds. So let's understand the process of reproduction in flowering plants. Now the reproductive parts of the flowering plants are situated in the flower. So these flowering plants in which the reproductive parts are carried within the flower and the seeds are enclosed in fruits are called as angiosperms. Now we know in sexual reproduction there is a male reproductive part and a female reproductive part. Some flowers like papaya and watermelon plants they contain either male reproductive part or a female reproductive part and are unisexual. But in some flowers like hibiscus and mustard, they have both male and female reproductive parts and are called as bisexual. So let's understand the male and the female reproductive parts of the flowering plants. Now if I take this flower and cut like this, you can see different parts of the flower. The green leaf like structure which are present at the base of the flower is called as sepals. You can also see these colorful structures which enclose different parts and these are called as petals. Now these petals are responsible for the fragrance. You can see this thin stalk with a swollen top. These are anther and filament. These together form the male reproductive part which is called as stamen. Now let's zoom in and understand the male reproductive part. This is a stamen and it has an anther and a filament. Now if I cut open this anther, it has a yellow powder like substance which is called as pollen grains. These pollen grains consist of the male sex cells or male gametes. The anther produces the pollen grains and the produced pollen grains are always stored in the anther only. In a flower usually there is more than one stamen. Let's zoom out and study about the female reproductive part. This flower shaped structure which is present in the center of the flower is the female reproductive organ and is called as carpel or pistil. It has three parts, stigma, style and ovary. Carpel is present in the center of the flower. Stigma is present at the top of the carpel and is responsible for receiving the pollens from the anther and is sticky in nature so that the pollens can stick to it. Next is the style which is a tube like structure which connects the stigma to the third part which is the ovary. Now the ovary is responsible for making ovules and to store them. These ovules consist the female sex cells or the female gametes. There are many ovules in the ovary. So we have seen the male reproductive part and the female reproductive part. Let's understand how the reproduction or formation of seeds takes place. Basically when the male sex cells present in the pollen grains unite with the female sex cells which are present in the ovules, it leads to the formation of seeds. This complete process occurs in two steps which is pollination and fertilization. Let's see these steps one by one. The first process is for pollination in which the male sex cells which are present in the pollen grains need to be transferred to the female sex organ which is carpel. So this transfer of pollen grains from stamen to carpel is called as pollination. Consider this bee which came to collect the nectar. When this bee sits on the flower to collect the nectar, the pollen grains from the anther in the stamen stick to the legs of the bee and when it moves from one flower to another flower to collect the nectar of that flower, these pollen grains drops off on the stigma in the carpel. 
Now we know stigma is sticky in nature, so the pollen grains stick on it and hence pollination is achieved. If the pollen grains are transferred from the stamen to the carpel of the same flower, it is called as self-pollination and when the pollen grains are transferred from the stamen of one flower to the carpel of another flower, it is called as cross-pollination. Now pollination can be achieved in different ways. It can be also achieved by water, wind or birds. In fact, the reason for fragrance and nectar in the flowers is to attract more insects for pollination. After pollination, the male sex cells have reached the stigma of the carpel, so it has to reach the female sex cells, which is also called as ovum, present in the ovule. Now, the pollens have landed on the stigma, it has to reach the ovum, so it has to develop a thin tube-like structure through the style which reaches the ovary. Now you can see here that a pollen tube has developed from the stigma to the ovary. Finally, this pollen tube bursts into the ovule which contains the female gamete ovum. Now the male gamete travels through this pollen tube and reaches the ovum present in the ovule. There it fertilizes or fuses with the female gamete to form a fertilized egg also called as zygote. This whole process of landing of pollen grains on the stigma to the fusion of female gametes and the male gametes is called as fertilization. So we saw how the zygote was formed but still the process is not complete since the seed is not formed. After fertilization what happens is that the zygote which is present inside the ovule, divides multiple times to form the embryo. The ovules also starts to develop a, a tough coat around itself and gets converted into a seed. So this is how seed is formed. Now there must be a question coming to your mind that the seed is inside the fruit, so how is the fruit formed? So the answer is, during the formation of seed from the zygote, the ovary starts to grow rapidly and ripens to form the fruit. So this is how the fruit is formed. The fruit which is formed protects the seed. Let's see the seed which is formed in a bit detailed way. Here you can see the seed. This seed consists of the baby plant or the embryo which was formed from the zygote. This baby plant only develops into a full grown plant. Now you can see here this baby plant has two structures. The upper structure is called as plumule, which develops into the shoot and the structure which is present here, it is called as radical. It develops into the root. Now you can also see here these two structures, it is called as cotyledons and they store the food. Now the baby plant is in inactive state in the seed, but when it is sown into the soil, it gets the sustainable conditions like air, water and warmth and germinates into a new plant which produces the flowers and ultimately the process is repeated. So this was the whole process of formation of new plant from the parent plant. In the next video we are going to see the sexual reproduction in human beings.